Welcome to the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. My name is Lars Fontine and every week on Monday this time we have a short live update on market cycles, dominant market cycles, which we will review here live on the channel. Today I have two data sets selected which I want to review with you in regards to the current cycles. We will have a current look at oil and oil cycles. This was requested by you out of the uh, community. So I'm happy to share um, data and cycles on oil with you. Um, and second, let's have a quick look uh, on commodities and let's review uh, some cycles in gold. That's the topics for today. Um, I hope you will like today's uh, update session. As we are running live, you are always invited to drop in your questions so that I'm reviewing your um, current questions and we can have a live chat here at the end of the session to get into your questions in regard to cycle analysis. So let's get started with oil cycles. In order to do this, we open our cycle scanner. This feature is available to all members. If you're new to this channel, the cycle analyzer is the tool we use to analyze our cycles. Um, we will grab the data set for um, the oil fu futures. Uh, which is listed here in the upper right corner of the window. So you can review this also on your own if you want to repeat the analysis. This is the Yahoo index, the Yahoo Finance index for the oil futures. So that's it. We've loaded the uh, daily data here uh, on the left hand side. And as we have this huge increase in the oil data set. Um, let's have a check at the current cycle analysis. Um, the standard procedure is that we will look at our spectrum. The spectrum is analyzed automatically when opening this data set. So we can scroll down here to check for the most dominant peaks in the spectrum. This is the digital signal processing which reveals um, all possible cycle length in this data set which are currently there. So this is a kind of dynamic approach to cycles where we check what the current analysis shows us using the last 800 days or three to four years on data sets. So we see a length of 161 days in this data set, which is the most prominent peak in this data set. That's always the starting point for cycle analysis. Uh, the triangle and the green coloring gives us additional information that the cycle has a high strength and a good valid Bartle score in regards to the statistical significance. So we will select the cycle with the length of 161 in our list of cycles. It's listed here as second important cycle here in the list. We will then activate the cycle as an overlay on the chart. And this is the current dominant cycle now plotted as overlay on the oil data. Um, so we will first have a current review about major tops and bottoms in the past so that we will um, um, review the, the current information here. So uh, in order to do this, I will just zoom in a little bit so that we can see um, the tops here and then we will just review it with our um, cursor here to see, um, to connect the, the tops which are aligned with the cycles here um, and then the bottoms um, based on the composite here. So here's the top, here's the top. I was selected a little slightly different color so that you can see it a little bit better. So here's the low which goes down here. So here's the uh, top then here's the low here that's just a visual um check to see how the alignment of the uh, tops and bottoms just using this cycle would have worked so here now you see at, at this midpoint of this cycle gets out of sync this could happen here so the last 
major five to or, or four um, movements here in this cycle have been played out while this one was skipped and now it looks like we are back um, on this cycle here which would suggest that we might see um, an extension of this cycle into the period of end of March. So at least from this cyclic perspective we see upwind into the period of end of March so it looks like that this upswing um, is not finished yet from the daily cycles. We can then cross check the weekly or even add more data set uh, data here to this data so I will just to show you what I would recommend to do you to verify these cycles just add some more data. I will just use five years of history which will just add more uh, data into this analysis. You see here on the left hand side this light blue data is now added. I will bring this also, also into the mix that we use a slightly longer period of data set which is now selected here. We do the same procedure and you see while selecting a um, slightly longer data set um, a longer cycle can be revealed and this is then uh, required if you want to detect longer term cycles you also need to use a longer period of historical data. So the um, um, there is also one with 370 uh, seven days uh, which could be selected. It's quite a longer term cycle so let's see how this cycle compares um, in regards to the projection uh, compared to our daily cycle we had before. So first we do the same procedure here. Let's quickly just review the um, main alignments in the past. Uh, based on this data set let's make it a little bit larger so that's visually better to spot here. So here we have the top and the low which is then nicely aligned just connecting the major tops here. So this fits much better into the current situation. Just yeah, I will I will comment this later on where we are now in this upswing here which is also should extend for the next uh, days to come. Um, what you see here is interesting during this um, downtrend phase here of this cycle. Yeah, I just mark it on the on the timeline. So you you can see here that's from from this top to this low here, which is the um, projected down period of this cycle here until until this point in time. We mainly saw, I um, mean that's always interesting to to monitor here sideways behavior of the market. So if you just average this period here we have some heavy swings to the downside. Yeah, But um, in general this was just um, a sideways move and once we reach the low projection from this cycle the main uptrend seemed to have resumed here. So that's that's always interesting to see if this downward cycle just results in a sideways movement and then from this point in time here the next upswing has started um, which results, re results then in, in getting back to this upswing cycle here. It seems th that the longer term uptrend yeah, which started from there is still intact and that just the downward facing uh, um, time period here just paused the larger upswing here. But the outcome should now be set into perspective um, with the shorter term daily cycle I showed you just some minutes ago and that's then the, the, the full picture you need to align here. Um, which means that uh, the daily cycle projected here still the cycles to continue in the upward phase until end of March and the longer term cycle just confirms the current upswing just extended into May, June. So just using these two dominant cycles from a longer term period of five years or just using three years which reveals these two dominant cycles on the daily time frame, um, we could expect the upward swing of these dominant cycles to continue until the period 
April to June. So April to June is the important window to update this analysis to see if the dy dynamic cycles will really top at this point in time or there might be a different picture of the dominant cycles. But that's at least what the cycles tell us today. Continuation of the uh, upward phase um, for the current momentum into the period of April to June. And we need to update the analysis because you should never follow a static projection. Uh, this needs to be updated at the latest end of March. And for sure, as we're talking about oil, you need to set this into the context of the current political um, crisis we see related to the Ukraine, Russia and the current conflict, which can heavily impact um, this analysis here. And even the, the emotional reactions can, can, can overlay the cycle here by a large amount. So don't use cycle analysis just on your own. You need to monitor the context this dynamic cycle is currently working in. So that's the first topic. Just have a quick look at the oil cycles. Next uh, commodity, which might be interesting, is uh, gold. So therefore, let's um, update our data to include uh, gold data. And I think the abbreviation for gold is um, this year just loading now the gold price or the gold futures also here in this case. Um, let's see what the spectrum. Uh, let me just just be sure that we have the right data here using here. Just a second. Uh, No, this is not gold. So therefore, yeah, I need to. This is not the gold futures. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, but now we have the correct data set loaded. So this is the uh, gold price, uh, the futures contract. Uh, we use the last three years of data set, 850 bars. So let's have a look at the spectrum. Um, we see, yeah, three peaks here, um, which could be used. So let's start with this first 173 um, is one cycle which looks like um, the most interesting here. Um, and it's not as clear as you often want it to look like. So therefore, let me explain if you have a look at this spectrum. Yeah, there are several peaks um, more or less with a similar amplitude in the spectrum. So we don't have one clear peak which stands out compared to the other peaks. Um, instead, we have now three peaks. And in addition, they don't have green triangles. They have blue triangles and very small triangles, which means um, the blue color information is the information in regards to the statistical significance of these cycles in the data set, which is on average, it's not high, it's not low, but it's it's not green, it's not high. We in, in most cases we want to have a high statistical significance, which which means that we have a lot of repetitions of these cycle in the data set. You could detect a cycle which just repeated once or maybe twice in this data set or the varying phase due to the principle of variation is too so high that we are not able to repeat really two, three, four um, repetitions of this cycle with similar phase and amplitudes. Therefore, the Bartle score is low. And these two important measures are really important. So the digital signal processing reveals the cycle, but then the Bartle score gives us additional information if we should trust the cycle in regards to projection. And the blue triangle means yeah, we don't have a high, high score here from the statistical verification point of view. And the small triangle means they also have a very low strength. Yeah, the, the larger the triangle, so you see here in the lower and um, larger triangle, it means that the impact of price movement per day is low. 
So that means the cycle the cycle might be there, but the impact on uh, the, the the amplitude on the impact of the absolute price movements is very low. So these cycles are not good to use for any projections because we don't know which really to pick from these three based on their amplitudes. Question one, not really answered. Question two, we want to have cycles with high statistical significance. We just have the blue score here, which is just the medium verification. So second topic, not really answered. And the third topic here is um, the strength score is also low if we pick these three ones. So to be honest, if you see this kind of spectrum, we should not do cycle projection with this data. I mean, we can do, we can select the cycles and uh, build a composite on, on the top, which will I do in a second. But I think this is a good example where you really need to pay attention or you really need to cross validate models built on this outcome here because the the numbers we are getting here in our cycle analysis would bring high caution to any predictive model we are building here. Um, you could use following these numbers. So the only one which looks interesting here, if I zoom in, um, is this shorter peak here you see um, on the left hand side of the spectrum. I've now only zoomed in with a length of 40 days. Here you see a large triangle, which means the strength score is good, and a green triangle, which means the statistical significance is very good. However, this is a very short cycle in regards to the length. So 40 days, uh, which means it flips every 20 days uh, in regards to, to the phase, which is if we do market projection based on daily information uh, would not be really useful in making projections um, in, in our daily time frame because this cycle is too short. Yeah, it's too small. So therefore, that said, that's always the combination you need, you need to look out. But in any case, if you want to build a composite, you could do, I will now add more data points to our data um, to see if the data might become more reliable. I will now extend the data set to five years of data. I will update the, the spectrum here. So now we have five years of uh, daily data. You see here over around 2000 data points here, um, which going to the spectrum um, shows us, uh, I need to reset it here, shows us a, a better picture to say it this way, a better picture because um, now we have we have one cycle which really stands out. You see, compared to the to the amplitude change here, this is really uh, separated um, in in comparison to the other peaks from the spectrum. So our first criteria um, is really oops uh, is really met here in this case. The second criteria I want to have good statistical significance, which is indicated by the color here. Now it's green. So our second criteria is also fulfilled. And our third criteria in regards to the strengths, so the impact on daily price movements of this cycle here is also good because you see a large triangle compared to the other smaller triangles. So now um, if we have added more historical data points to our analysis, now we have found a cycle which could be used for our projection. So I hope this explains you also uh, not just showing the projection, also how to read a spectrum and how to decide to use a cycle for projection or to not use a cycle, which is a very um, uh, important knowledge if you do your own cycle analysis. So this one here um, uh, has which um, has a length, so the highest length of 340, it's around 360. So let's select this cycle here in our um, um, plotter here. So the length is 372 uh, days. So I will now activate this cycle here. Um, and our statistical significance showed us this cycle is valid to pick as a projection. So now the standard procedure applies. I would recommend always do a small cross check in regards to the historical um, tops and bottoms of this cycle here. So in this case here, we have the low here, uh, then the top. And as always said, if you're new to this channel, we are looking for 
timing information based on this cycle. So don't use these um, visual information in regards to absolute price targets. We are just looking for the points in time when important tops and bottoms might occur based on this cycle. Yeah? That's the information we get from this cycle here, not absolute price targets. So we just align the points in time predicted by the cycle um, with major uh, information here in regards to what happens in the in the um, underlying data set. So the, we, we have this. so I'm just connecting the price um, information at the points in time um, or here where the um, projection has made. So and now we are at this point in time here, and you see from this. Um, analysis and this dominant cycle that this cycle suggests we are currently arriving at a major top of this cycle here even though the last one and a half years have been a more or less um, sideways um, behavior of the cycle this upswing phase here which which has now come to an end resulted just in the sideways procedure here of the market and this up phase of this dominant cycle has now ended somewhere in January this year. So this cycle now rolled over um, to the downside, which we need to get confirmation from some technical analysis and uh, confirming indicators that this cycle might now turn to the negative side in regards to the phase and the projection on gold. Yeah, that's it for gold. And I hope this analysis also showed you um, that you never should blindly pick cycles just from your um, um, yeah, spectrum analysis. And especially here on gold, um, I explained or I tried to explain you the reasoning behind when to use cycles selected from, from the spectrum and when to not select cycles. And I hope this information should be more valuable and usable than just the projection alone we did here on gold. Um, and as always, um, don't trade cycles alone. This is just for learning purposes, for educational purposes, how we use digital signal processing in our market environment to detect cycles and then overlay them on the price charter to derive some timing information when these cycles are supposed to change direction, which could be used then as additional information in our analysis procedure, which should include for sure also other measures. So that's it for today in regards to gold and oil. So you have two data sets which have been predicted um, with additional learning content. So if you want, let's now switch to some questions and I try to bring in answers. <laughs> Therefore, I will now have a look at the live chat and pick some questions to discuss it with you. Um, Annie, there's also the question how to access the Baltic Dry Index. On the Baltic Dry Index, I think the last two sessions I um, explained how to do this. So the Baltic Dry Index is not automatically available. You need to download it. It's public available. Um, and then you need to upload this data set uh, to get it analyzed. Um, Ken Ikram, can you please reload the Baltic Dry Index into the System Scanner dashboard? Um, yeah, I, I did this several times in the last video, so uh, I don't expect any updates here, but um, I can do this next week. So I don't want to do this now as we are running already half an hour. But if you are all interested in updates on cycles on the Baltic Dry Index, I can promise to revisit cycles in the Baltic Dry Index next week, Monday, same time, same place. So just uh, um, check in next week, Monday, and I will do the Baltic Dry Index update. Um, Tom, um, your question, you've used the RSI as an indicator of price momentum. The represent representation looks different than the typical RSI. Will you please explain the difference? Um, in general, the reason I'm referring to technical indicators on this channel or related to cycles is mainly because the information we derive from the spectrum chart 
and the analysis I showed you, the length information, the length information of the cycle. So if you remember on the longer term gold cycle, we had the length of 370 something. And on the oil cycle, we had the length of 160 something. You could use this length to fine tune technical indicators. And the main procedure is use harmonics of the cycle length. So I would recommend using harmonics of two to three, uh, which are the major harmonics. So you can divide it by three. So 377 divided by two is around 190, 180. Um, and the same, this was gold. And then you can do the same on the detected um, oil cycle. And then it doesn't matter if you use the RSI or any other technical indicator. I've just explained this example on um, variation of the RSI index. So the RSI index I used was just the cyclic smooth version, which in general is the same. So as this channel is not about technical analysis, um, I won't go into the details of technical analysis here. So um, please, please accept that as we are here dealing dealing with cycles. Um, Abby Jones, sometimes I see that the dominant cycle does not appear in the active cycle list. Where could be the error in the settings? Yeah, that's uh, an often received question. And I often try to give you an answer on that. But um, let's quickly repeat the, the solution to this question. So I will therefore switch to our cycle and anal analyzer here. I will just cl clean up the, the chart here. Oops, no, that's not what I want. Um, what you're talking about is that the dominant cycle here in the lower left hand corner might not show up in the list here. I think that's that's also the the case here. And in general, the dominant cycle is the cycle with the highest strength. So in general, you should find it on top of the list. When you won't find it in the list, that's due to different settings in your configuration. And you need to make sure that the settings for the cycle scanner and the cycle explorer are set to the exact same settings. So the cycle scanner is responsible outputting the, the list on the right hand corner. And you also see a Bartels limit. So there's the cycle scanner has a standard setting, a very low Bartels limit because you want to see all cycles in the list. But you could filter out cycles with the Bartels uh, offset below 49, which is the same setting the Explorer has as standard setting. So you need to make sure that the settings are the same. I have now done this for the Bartel limits. Um, so let's do this. The first time here, that's the first setting, which will now ensure that here the Bartels limit on the right hand side is always above 49. A second important setting is that the um, Explorer uses a so called dynamic in sample range setting, which is different than the standard usage of the scanner. The scanner always uses all data which is available or which you have loaded into our cycle scanner because that's the purpose of the cycle scanner. Um, it, it does not do any dynamic tweaking of the data. The cycle scanner uses all data in sample start, in sample end, full stop. The Explorer is designed to detect the current dynamic cycle, which means you don't need, or the cycle Explorer does not need years of daily data because you're not interested um, in the uh, cycle amplitude and phase based on five years ago, the cycle explorer uh, should pick up the phase and the amplitude of the cycle in the current market environment and should not average it. So therefore, if you want to have the exact same figures, um, you need to set this to full sample range. And full sample range then um, gives you the information that also the Explorer, which is responsible to detect the dominant cycle, uses the full data you have selected here in the upper window. And now you can see that the numbers match. So the dominant cycle is listed as 94. And also the first cycle listed here in the table is 94. That's how you um, change the configuration to get the exact same results from the dominant cycle which is configured in the settings via the Explorer 
and the cycle scanner, which is responsible for the table output. So AB, I, I hope this explains how to um, change the configuration. Um, okay. Mm, Ahmed, from August 2020 to today, uh, it's 18 months cycle for gold. Yeah, I mean, you, you could use an also weekly chart data um, and, and analyze long-term cycles. So this is what I would now leave to you as a community. I just show you and explain you the main procedure and therefore using daily charts. Um, if you are now looking also for monthly cycles, I would recommend also use weekly data and check the weekly cycles, which are then um, detected or revealed if you load weekly data into the scanner. So therefore, this is mainly just to give you the, the impulse, yeah, a quick uh, information how you can do this on your own. And um, I want to teach you how to do cycle analysis. The purpose of this channel is not to make market predictions. However, we use current data. So we just we don't want to do some marketing effects here with past data. We show our real data here and can revisit this on their own. And for sure, the cycles I show you here could be used as additional information in your own environment. So I don't show you garbage here. Uh, so this is real information also. But you need also to do your homework um, and also analyze the longer term cycles, shorter term cycles and put this into context of the current market environment and also add your technical analysis. That said, that's it for today. I think we have also gone over some of your question, questions. So I would thank you for joining me today in the Cycles Outlook and I would invite you, please join me next week on Monday, same place, same time, this channel here. We will review some live market cycles here. Thanks for joining me and see you next week. Bye.